Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my favourite, favourite, favourite reads of 2021. But first I just want to say it's my 100th video! Cannot believe it. Just want to say very quickly thank you for watching my videos, for commenting and liking and being also lovely and supportive. It's the only reason I've been able to keep making videos so just thank you very, very much. But yes, on to the video. I have got 12 books, my 12 five star reads of 2021 and I'm going to talk about them all with you today. I have to apologise in advance because I <laughs> read most of these, all but one of these in the first half of the year. Another one was in July so I really do not have the best memory of these books. My memory for reading this year has been so so bad, worse than it's ever been in my life and I do not know why. Actually no I do know why, it's because I was very ill. But I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But yes, without further ado, let's get into the books. First up is A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. This one I read, I think, in like February. So a good long while ago, almost a year ago. This is the first in a new urban fantasy series. And you follow four queer teens who kind of become unlikely allies as they team up to solve some murders. And it's very, very queer. You've got a questioning pansexual main character, a lesbian main character, Nausicaa, my love, and two Achillean characters, I can't quite remember if their sexualities are specified. It is just wonderful, phenomenal, I love this book so much. So this book for the most part takes place in Toronto and you get to kind of explore its magical underworld in this kind of world where there are fae and you get to see their court, the seely and the unseely, the different seasons. And you definitely get to explore that more in the sequel, I believe. I've not read it yet, but that's the impression I'm getting. And I am just very excited for that. I think it's going to be really fun. I enjoyed the world building in this book a lot. And just getting introduced to this world, it really just reminded me of reading like City of Bones for the first time and getting this whole world to explore. And I just loved it. I really it kind of reminded me why I love the genre and it was the first fantasy book I picked up in a while that I'd enjoyed as well so it was just very special to me. <laughs> Honestly it's got like big City of Bones vibes but imagine Jace is like less annoying and a lesbian. <laughs> Still this wonderful arrogant chaotic sword wielding badass but instead a woman who's a lesbian and also this like ancient being with lots of mystery surrounding her. She's very cool. I love Nausicaa so much. <laughs> so yes, the characters of this book really stood out to me the most as is usually the case with me when reading books. I think you'll find there's a theme through all of these books. Characters, my favourite part, always. And our four characters you meet in here, I love them all so much individually and I love their banter as they got together. It just oh, it reminded me of loving books again. It was so good. I'm so excited to read the sequel. It comes out this year and to read more from our two male perspectives because this book very much focused on our sapphics. Oh yeah, this is Nausicaa on the cover by the way. <laughs> and yes, I just loved, loved, loved this book so much. I can't recommend it enough. This goes for all of these books. I'll just say that in advance. <laughs> There's a reason they're all my favourites. And yeah. Also, once you know what this title means, extremely gay. Love it so much. Next up I had Not My Problem by Kira Smith. This is the author of The Falling In Love Montage. My favourite book of all time, probably my favourite author. This book is confirmed because I just loved this book as well. Not quite as much as The Falling In Love Montage. It's not like an all-time favourite but it's definitely a favourite of the year and I adored it. So this follows Aideen whose life is a bit of a mess, her mom's drinking again, she's flunking school, her best friend's kind of drawing away from her and she is just not having a great time of it. But when she comes across Maeve who she doesn't particularly like, a class SWAT know-it-all kind of girl, crying in the bathroom because her workload is just so much, they come up with a very creative solution of Aideen pushing Maeve down the stairs. And then Aideen begins to learn she has a knack for solving other people's problems and in very unconventional ways, I will say. <laughs> and this begins this kind of fun journey of her fixing other people's problems and also becoming friends with some of these people and really just kind of finding her own place. 
while also still trying to deal with her own problems as well that she just cannot solve as easily as other people's. And this was just so wonderful and delightful. I have a full uh, video review for this one, I'll link down below. It's got Kira Smith's wonderful, wonderful humour to it. It's just one of the very few authors that can actually make me crack up while reading that I actually find funny and it's just done so well here and it the narrative being so light-hearted and funny while dealing with some really tough subjects is also a bit of a fun juxtaposition is that the right word <laughs> I don't know I pretend I know big words about books and reviewing and stuff I don't really this was just a lot of fun but also so can't think of the word but it deals with some very tough subjects as well but with the utmost care and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved um, the friendship between Aideen, Maeve and Cavi, a wee boy that becomes their friend as well through this problem solving thing. There's a scene with the three of them sitting in a bath together which is just like my favourite. Oh I love it. I love the three of them together. They're all like misfits but finding their own place with each other and mm. chef's kiss so good thoroughly 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 enjoyed cannot wait to see what Kira writes next oh loved it next up I want to talk about the midnight lie by Marie Rakowski so I read this one and the next book I'm going to talk about for a vlog reading hyped sapphic books to see if they're worth the hype and since both of these books are in this vlog you can say that they very very much are I adored them both so much but first let's talk about the midnight lie so this is the first in a YA fantasy duology the second book is the hollow heart is out I also read it and loved it but this one is better I would say it's definitely one of my favorites so this book follows Nidham and Sid now Nidham lives on this kind of island city where they really just don't know anything about the rest of the world. They believe that they are the only people in the world. And the city is kind of divided into sections and uh, like social classes and it's very very strict. And Nidham is from the poorest section and you're not allowed any real freedoms, any like nice things. You can't wear certain colours, you can't eat sweets. You're often imprisoned for the most minor crimes possible. And it's when Nidham is in prison that she then meets Sid who is a foreigner, which is very very strange because as I said they believe that they are the only people and so foreigners aren't very common and so Sid is kind of part of the more upper class even though she's a foreigner she immediately fits in with them and she tells Nerum of the magic that this upper class possesses and the two of them begin working together to discover this magic and where it comes from, how it works, all of that and the ways it's being abused by the upper society and I just loved it so much. This duology is just fantastic, highly recommend it. Um, it's got this most gorgeous, gorgeous writing and it fits so well with Nerum's character. It's quite simple and straightforward, but beautiful all the same. And as this duology progresses and you learn more about the magic as well, that's so interesting. I loved how it was done. It's phenomenal. But of course the highlight for me was the romance between Sid and Nerim. They just, they work so well together. They're, they just like made me feral. I was so in love with the two of them and in love with them being in love and they just, I loved the relationship so much. I definitely pick, recommend this one for like a sapphic fantasy romance. I, I've not really seen very many of those but I definitely recommend this one for that because the romance is the kind of main driving force of the story. And the other thing I loved, it's not fully explored in this book but a lot more in the sequel but I'll talk about it here as well, is the lesbianism. So both of our main characters are lesbians and through Nerim's character you really uh, talk about comp het, compulsive heterosexuality, this idea of being really raised in a heteronormative society so you don't even realise that it's possible to like girls and Nerim kind of unraveling that. I loved seeing that in fiction in a fantasy book as well. I've not really read any books that explore that but it was such a like big part of me realising I was a lesbian and realising that I'd been like raised to think I would like men and so it didn't occur to me to even consider that I wouldn't. So it meant a lot to me to see that in this book and how it was explored here. 
the other thing would be Sid, also a lesbian. She's like kind of gender non-conforming, which is really cool to see in a fantasy book. And I love that for her as well. You get her perspective in the sequel, which is really fun as well. And yes, this is just a fantastic book. Loved it so much. Hope you read it. It's so good. Next up was Gideon the Night by Tamsin Muir. Again, I read this for a vlog and I will leave that one linked down below as well. The same vlog as A Midnight Light, by the way. And again, wonderful. Adored it. I really wasn't sure what to expect going into this book. I wasn't expecting a five star read, that's for sure. I was quite intimidated because it's not really my genre. But oh my god, I adored it. it again, it made me feral. I went very feral in that vlog. <laughs> I love that vlog so much. I will not stop talking about it. Please watch it if you haven't already. So this is this like chaotic blend of sci-fi with a bit of fantasy and a bit of horror mixed in and it works so so well. This follows Gideon Nav who is indentured to the ninth house in this kind of space society where there are nine houses of necromancer families and Gideon wants out. She is trying to escape at the beginning of the novel. She is thwarted again by Hau Hart, the reverent daughter of the ninth house who takes Gideon on as her cavalier, her swordswoman, because she needs a swordswoman and there's no one else in the house that can do it. And the two hate each other, but they journey together to this kind of like old castle alongside uh, people representing each of the other houses to kind of join in this competition to become lighters, I believe they're called, which is like, all powerful necromancers, immortal, everything like that, just directly serving their leader. You follow them in this castle, meeting the other competitors, which is fun. There's such a good dynamic between them all, just very chaotic. It's a lot of fun. And also trying to work out this competition because they're really just left there like, here, figure it out yourselves, have fun. And then things start happening, people start dying, no one knows who to trust. There's just such a fun, ambience to it and everything and at the same time you've got Gideon and Harrow beginning to maybe grow closer they still hate each other but do they really and it's just wonderful there's so many good scenes between the two of them in this book oh wonderful um I also read the sequel I also loved it though I did prefer this one Harrow Har Harrow the Ninth is very very confusing to read and I can't explain why it's confusing without spoiling this one so I won't but it's infinitely more confusing than this one. This series definitely isn't for the faint of heart. It's quite confusing, it's quite violent, but it's a lot, a lot of fun. And Gideon is a lesbian, I will say. Um, I believe Haro Safik as well. Yes, she is, never mind. <laughs> there's stuff in the second book. And there's no romance. I hope there will be romance. I hope this is an enemies to lovers situation. If it is, it's the best one I've ever read, but we'll have to wait and see for the rest of the books in the series to confirm that. But I'm just in love with this book so much. It was such an unexpected fave, but I adored it. Next up is It Goes Like This by Neil Moreland. A bit of a change of pace, but nonetheless, another fantastic favourite book of the year. So this follows four perspectives and they are each former members of a queer pop group that rose to fame as teenagers but fell apart and you kind of follow them reuniting for a charity benefit concert for their hometown and kind of understanding what really happened when they fell apart at the same time and I loved it so much so what can I say so it's sapphic all of our main characters are queer we have two lesbians I believe, a bi girl and a non-binary pan person I believe and so it's incredibly incredibly queer and you've got a sapphic romance as well. They were former childhood sweethearts but when the band fell apart so did they and then you follow them reuniting and learning to trust each other and love each other again and it's so sweet. I mm -hmm, love it so much. This book just made me so soft like Oh. Another thing was it also kind of delves into fandom because Eva, one of our main characters, she kind of lurks in the fandom um, and is friends with some of the people who post in the fandom as well. 
for the band and they're all like speculating getting back together and everything so you kind of get that exploration as well which I really enjoyed and it just reminds me of big loving something so much that you're part of a fandom for it um I've not really felt that with music very much like other than my love palsy and I'm not involved in the fandom like that but it just reminded me of loving so much something so much and obsessing over these little details and speculating and everything it's so fun but yes this book just this rekindling of a friendship and learning to trust each other and love each other again was so precious I just adored it honestly cannot recommend it enough love it <laughs> next up we have got the henna wars by Adiba Jagudar I read this one and Hany and Ishi, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, in a reading vlog together. So again, I will leave a link, you can check it out down below. So this is a Slavic YA contemporary novel and you follow Nishat. And she comes out to her parents as a lesbian and is told no, it's just not possible for a Muslim girl, for a Bengali girl. And this is all very complicated by the fact that she's beginning to develop feelings for her rival, her formal childhood friend. Flavia. So yes, they are rivals, they have rival henna businesses in this like school enterprise project and through this, because Nishat is not Bengali or not Muslim, we get these kind of discussions of cultural appropriation versus appreciation as well, which is really interesting and just the two of them kind of beginning to become friends again and trying to, well, while also trying to beat each other and all that. It's a really fun dynamic between the two of them. And I just really loved the story, how it all developed. I like the discussions of being Muslim and being queer and all of that. Just the wonderful culture um, that was explored in the book with like food and dress and everything. It was fantastic. It's just a lovely, touching story. Highly recommend it. I love these girls so much. I love their relationship and oh, it was just fantastic. Sister relationships as well between Nishat and her sister. Just so good love it. And then next up also by Deepa Jagadar, Hani and Ishi's Guide to Fake Dating. Again, I just adored this one. It was just wonderful. There's a lot of things I loved about the Henna Wars that I also loved about this one. Um, this follows Hani and Ishi, our two main characters are both in their perspectives and as you may guess they begin to fake date. <laughs> this all begins when Hani, who is like the popular girl, gets on with everyone she says to her friends that she's bisexual and they just don't believe her they, and they ask for like proof that she's dating someone because she must be dating someone to be bi to know that she likes girls she blurts out that she is dating Ishu who she's not really friends with but they're both the only uh south asian girls in their year at, i believe at school and she just figures you know it works <laughs> why not say Ishu? and then Ishu is not very impressed with this <laughs> at all but the two begin to fake date because this also works out in issues favor if she because she wants to be like class president i can't remember or is it head girl maybe you know that kind of position and it's a popularity contest really the vote so dating the popular girl gets her that popularity gets her the position you see so they date it's mutually beneficial but of course real feelings become begin to come to light and it's just wonderful they have a grumpy sunshine dynamic which is one of my favorite tropes like Hani is just living sunshine so sweet I love her and <laughs> Ishu is so grumpy and oh it works so well and yes again there's some discussions of being Muslim or being South Asian and queer um and different ways of experiencing religion and culture again uh and it's just wonderful I thoroughly enjoyed it. I also love the discussions of biphobia and bisexuality like with Hani's friends not believing her and just like toxic friendships as well. That was just very interesting to explore and I, and I just loved watching the character development of these two characters. It's a wonderful wonderful story. Next up I want to talk about The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimons. This is a short and sweet uh, YA romance. It's just so Mmm, heartwarming. I adored my time reading this. I just flew through it. You follow a main character called Spencer who is trans and he's starting a new school 
and he decides that he's going to just pass as trans in school instead of kind of outing himself after some previous terrible experiences at his old school. So Spencer joins the football team, he's loving it, he loves football, he's making friends, he's got a bit of a crush, it's all going great. But when his coach is forced to bench him because of a discriminatory law, um, Spencer has to choose between coming out and fighting for his right to play or just passing but sitting on the sidelines. And this was just such a wonderful story. It definitely didn't focus so much on this aspect as discriminatory law. It was much more in the romance, which I really, really enjoyed. It's very refreshing to get something so positive and uplifting. I think I wrote in my review that this book just feels like a warm hug. It's so comforting and just clearly written for a queer, particularly a trans audience. And I just adored every moment with it. It's so sweet. I love the romance between our two boys. Mm, so good. Next up, we have got 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Garcevilla. Yet another kind of sporty romance contemporary novel. Loved it so, so, so much. This follows Jules, who is gay and living in Texas. He is the Latino Chicano, and he knows that he can't really come out to his community because there's a lot of homophobia, there's, there's this idea of machismo, and this is kind of his plan to just not come out and to live his best queer life in college. But then he accidentally gets very very drunk and comes out on Twitter to everyone and so he has to deal with the consequences. But the kind of light in all of this is that Matt, his Twitter crush from California, slides into his DMs and the two begin talking and then falling in love and it's just this like long distance pining. It's so lovely. I love their relationship. I wasn't sure about reading a book with a long distance relationship if I would connect with it as much but oh I did. It's so good. <laughs> Um, and then we've also got Jules's friends and his sister. They're just so wonderful. I loved reading all of their moments together. It's so gorgeous. And these discussions of machismo and all of this, the homophobia in this community. It's, all, it's not easy to read, but it's just handled so sensitively and with such care and love that the book never feels like really sad and traumatic when at moments it could have been. And it's just so wonderful and heartwarming and I loved it. I loved how very clearly Latino this book is with the bits of Spanish, the food, the just the culture, all of it. It's so wonderful. It's such a good book. I adored it. I cannot say any more than it's just fantastic. Oh and also like when you know what the title means it's so okay. It's so, so gay, it's so cute. Oh, I love it. Next up, we have got Ace of Spades by Frida M.K. Amiri. This is a YA thriller. It's pitched as Gossip Girl meets Get Out. And it is absolutely fantastic. I was just blown away by how much I loved this book. I could not put it down. So this falls a dual perspective between Chimaka and Devin. These two are both the only black pupils in their very elite school. And the two of them become victims of an anonymous texter called Aces and they have to kind of work together to put a stop to it. And they are both queer, Devin is gay and you really explore being black and poor and gay and how dangerous that can be in his community and all of that which I really enjoyed. And Chimaka who's like the perfect head girl, popular girl whose life kind of comes crashing down around her with this anonymous texting. She's queer, there is a bit of a relationship with a girl as well. It's so good. Like, I don't want to say too much about it because obviously I don't want to spoil it. I feel like it's best with thrillers to go in not knowing a lot. But like, the layers of just insidiousness in this book blew me away. It's so much worse than you think it's going to be in the best way. It's just phenomenal. The writing is so gripping and it's just told so fantastically well that it keeps you guessing and it just has such impactful kind of climax moments and oh chef's kiss I cannot wait to see what Frida writes next it's going to be incredible I just adored this I loved 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 it it's definitely not one to go into knowing that it deals very very heavily with racism particularly institutionalized and 
be aware of that because it's not easy to read but it's so worth it if you're in the right headspace for it. Next up we have got Gear Breakers by Zoe Hannah Makuta. This is a YA sci-fi. It's the first and I believe a duology which concludes this year and it is just wonderful. I also adored this one so much. So this follows two perspectives, Sona and Eris, these two girls on opposite sides of a war. So in this world they've got this tyrannical city called Godolia who has the rest of the country under its thumb and uses these massive wind-up mechas to keep everyone in line. And so we follow Eris who is a gear breaker which means she destroys these mechas and is kind of like a rebel. And when one of her missions goes awry she is captured by one of the mechas and taken to the training academy to be questioned slash tortured. But there she meets Sona who is one of the kind of enhanced pilots for these mechas and the two girls begin talking and they learn that Sona is there to infiltrate them. She doesn't believe in the cause and she wants to do as much damage as she can from the inside. And so the two girls escape together and do some damage and they begin to develop some feelings for each other and it's wonderful and it's just such a good book. I'm so excited for the sequel because the ending, wow. <laughs> um, Yes, I just adore this. Um, you get to meet the rest of the Gear Breakers, which was really fun. I loved their community. I loved um, Eris's team. It's a, a big found family vibe and it's just so fun. I loved those characters so much. I loved the relationship between these two so much. And oh, it's just such a stunning novel. It's got gorgeous, gorgeous prose as well. I just adored it. I wasn't sure going in I'd like it because sci-fi is not really my thing and it sounds very confusing with these big mechas and everything but don't worry it's really readable. I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. I cannot wait to read more. I need the sequel immediately. Finally we have got Loveless by Alice Oseman. So this is a YA contemporary novel and we follow Georgia who's just beginning at university and she has never fallen in love, never been in love, never had a crush and she thinks this is weird. So she kind of sets herself on this journey of being determined to fall in love with someone, to have a relationship. But then she learns these new words, asexual and aromantic, and she begins to realise that maybe falling in love just isn't for her and that these words fit her and her identity. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous coming out story. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I love the focus on platonic relationships, her, she's got just the very best friends, a lovely friendship and you also deal with how this can ch how your relationship with your friends from school can change when you join university and I really love that as well as well as meeting new friends and oh it's just fantastic, so heartwarming, I am in love. <laughs> You've also got a side sapphic relationship which is really fun. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's just it's just such a lovely touching book and I find so much of what Georgia was going through really really relatable and I just absolutely adored it. I cannot recommend it enough. It's my favourite of Alison's prose novels that I've read. It's just wonderful. Now that is all my favourite reads of 2021. I hope that you pick some of these books up. Let me know if you already read and love some of these because I just want to talk about them all the time because <laughs> I love them so much. Um, just to say, I forgot to mention at the start, I decided I would film this in order that I read them so that's the order that they're in. I couldn't put them into like a order of my favourite to least favourite because I just love them all so much. <laughs> so I will have all the links I mentioned to vlogs down below as well as reviews for most of these books because most of them were review copies as well as just links to add them on Goodreads as well and I also have links to my social media. Um, on Instagram I have a post of my other favourites of 2021 so like films, TV, music and I, I'd love it if you check that out as well to know a bit more about what I've been watching and there's a lots of sapphic, lots of queer shows so get some recommendations there. And yes, just thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon.